you're going to get a point when people lose faith in fiat currencies and they're going to flock to precious metals. People are afraid. People are worried because they've seen inflation. Inflation is a big uh, driving factor. Obviously, uh, I've been saying for a while that uh, inflation is going to be the defining feature of, uh, of the investment landscape for the next decade easily. So you'd think, okay, well, precious metals should do well during inflation. You know, central banks are trapped. We are at huge debt levels in the 1970s, which is the closest sort of analog to what we're facing right now. You know, full decade of really high rising inflation. And during that time period, believe it or not, debt to GDP actually fell. By the time we reached 1980, the debt to GDP level was 30%. Today, we're at 130%. So it's very simple. If you look at what's going on, you say, well, what, what ended inflation in the 1970s? Well, the Fed chair Volcker was able to raise rates, had the guts and the ability, I'm going to say that's important to consider. He had the ability to raise rates to 20% for a little while. That sounds crazy to some people today. I know that. But the reason he had the ability was because the debt to GDP level was so low. Debts relative to economic output were relatively low. Today, we're at more than four times the debt to GDP level that we had in the 1970s. So for me, it's very clear. Central banks will talk tough. They will raise rates somewhat. I don't think they're going to be raising them much farther. And then they're going to have to stop and we're going to have a recession. And then they're going to start backing off and decreasing rates. And they know debts are huge. If they increase rates too much, that makes paying the interest on these debts. I'm talking government debt, consumer debt, car loans, student debt, mortgages, you name it. I mean, it's all at practically record levels across the board. The Fed knows this. How much could it possibly raise rates without absolutely crushing everyone? The government itself, I believe at some point, is going to have to start printing money just to pay the interest on its debt. So the Fed's hands are tied, central bank's hands are tied. They can only go so far. They're going to talk tough, make people think that they're going to raise rates to, to keep things under control, but they can't. And in fact, it actually suits them to allow inflation to run hot because it makes debts easier to pay over time because the money's worth increasingly uh, less. There's really nothing realistically that they can do. The Fed knows it themselves. They're not going to admit it. But like I said, they're going to talk tough because that's really all they can do is try and manage expectations when it really comes down to that they can really only, in a practical sense, really only do so much, raise rates so much without really crushing everything and everyone. But if you look at you know where gold and where silver are, going back to 2000, gold was at $250, 2000, 2001, silver was at $4. So, you know, silver went to $50 twice since 2000. Gold's been to 2000 twice since 2000. So look, silver, what's going to kick it higher is when you see that all bets are off with inflation. When the Fed, you know, basically caves and the Fed blinks, stops increasing rates because it sees it really can't anymore because a recession has kicked in and actually starts to cool rates or pull, pull back on rates, decreasing and cutting them. I think that's going to be your firing pistol, um, your firing shot for the next uh, big up leg in precious metals. You know, if you look at how silver acts, silver is very volatile. It's a very much a sentiment based kind of uh, asset. People buy precious metals when there's fear. And I think that the investment demand for silver is underrated in terms of what it can do. Look, silver is 50%, a little more than 50% industrial metal. So that means that it goes into electronics, it goes into electrical uses, it goes into EVs, it goes into medical, all sorts of medical uses. And its single biggest use is solar. So, you know, I think that even if we do see a slowdown, there's so much support for this, you know, shift to a green economy and green energy. And especially with solar there's some countries where solar is the cheapest new way to add power to your uh, electrical grid you know solar just gets cheaper solar consumes 11 percent of the annual supply of silver and i just think there's so much support for this shift towards green energy the support is going to create a floor under the silver price it does make sense to have you know a higher cost for physical silver especially for a single ounce than for the spot price but the spot price absolutely has to rise, and I think it will rise. You're going to get a point when people lose faith in fiat currencies, and they're going to flock to precious metals. When you have that, it's just going to be completely overwhelmed. People think that they can't get inventory now, that they can't get supply now. We haven't seen anything. 
I mean, I think that it's going to just go absolutely wild and the premiums are just going to go even that much higher. You know, people should, I think, buy at least a little physical. It's an area you want to have some exposure to. You don't want to be caught without at least a little bit of physical. It's proven itself over hundreds and thousands of years, in fact, and I believe we're going back towards that. Uh, gold is the anti-dollar. Gold and silver are the anti-dollar. And so we're certainly evolving, if you want to use that word, uh, maybe I'm too generous, but we're working towards a future where precious metals will have some form of backing currency once again, whether it's overt or not. You could just have something like a big announcement by the Bank of China saying that, you know, our last official declaration on how much gold we have was, say, 1,500 tons. Today, it's 5,000 tons, something along those lines. And I am convinced that they're aiming to reach what the U.S. says it has officially, which is about 8,000 tons. And that'll put them on par with the U.S. Their economy is a couple of years, maybe, from matching the size of the U.S. economy. And so they play the long game. You know, an overnight announcement like that, I think, is going to be a huge game changer. People just should not sit back and be lax about it. They have to be careful of, you know, what is definitely called recency bias. Don't assume that what you've experienced and lived up until the last recent past is the way things are going to play out going forward. Be forward looking. Look at non-mainstream information sources. You know, make up your own mind about what's logical, but look at the arguments and see what makes sense. And, you know, history does not necessarily repeat, but it often rhymes. If you look at what happened in the 70s, I think that's a great indication for where we're headed. I think it's just going to be on another level. So people really, really need to look at what may be coming and, and prepare for it accordingly. If you look at what happened, that, that was not a sustainable thing. But if you look at the silver squeeze, you know, silver went from 25 to 29 dollars in the span of a few days. As I said, don't expect that to last. You know, this is not a fundamental shift in demand that's pushing silver demand up in a sustained way all of a sudden overnight. And that's pretty much how it played out. The silver stocks went crazy for a while. It all backed off. The one thing that has really pretty much maintained, and I find that very interesting, that premiums on silver were already high since the pandemic hit and they just went through the roof. In some cases, they went to 75 and even 100% on the spot price. What really interesting is that there were reports of silver bullion dealers saying that, well, not only were they completely overwhelmed after decades of experience in the field, some of them had to shut down. Their phone and their websites were overwhelmed. They would crash. They had no more stock to sell to buyers. But the really interesting takeaway, it was mostly small orders. So what you had was the retail side of things came in big time and said, I want a few ounces of silver and I, and I want them now. And, and deliveries went from two to three days to two to three weeks. It's going to take a serious amount of demand to really overwhelm the paper market. But I do think that that's ultimately where we're going, that the spot price is going to have to rise. It'll never match the physical price because you can justify a higher physical over spot. You know, an ounce of silver right now, a coin. There's a fair amount of effort that goes into produce this thing versus the value of it. But you've got manufacturing, you've got distribution, you've got warehousing, you've got your profits. So, you know, compared to a gold coin, that's why the premiums on gold are a lot smaller on a percentage basis than they are on silver.